without further ado, let's bring on Alexander Pagani. Alexander Pagani, how you doing tonight? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need everybody in the chat room to write defund the demonic come on write it in the chat room and i'm gonna wait for everybody to write it in the chat room right defund the demonic Amen. i love it i love the shirt i'm like i have over here the ephesians 6 shirt with the swords and the whole verse and then he comes up in here with the bold defund the demonic i love it man i love what god is doing with you i'm excited to have you on it's been too long let's just make let's just go ahead and make a promise here before our whole audience there's 2300 people watching we can never go this long again without doing a broadcast together okay we're just gonna go ahead and make that deal right here right. right here live on the broadcast because it has been too long you know when we get together it's just like a nuclear warhead going off against satan's kingdom and guys I want to say this about him before I turn him loose. There's a lot of stuff he's going to be sharing with our audience you've never heard before. I want you to have an open mind. I want you to have an open heart. Some of these demons, these idols, these things that we're going to unmask tonight are essential. And this is one of the things, Alexander, I really believe, and this is why we're doing this tonight, is that you cannot find it, fight an enemy or an army you've not identified. So many right now in the church, Alexander, we know are shadow boxing. Many of you watching right now, you're shooting into the dark. You're swinging at nothing. And we must identify our enemy before we can fect effectively war against it so you might be saying why are we talking about this or why about this spirit or that spirit or that false god or that idol it's because we are exposing the works of the enemy in fact in second corinthians 2 11 paul says this lest satan should have an advantage of us we cannot right. be ignorant of his devices. And so the enemy mm -hmm. is working in darkness. And when we uncover him tonight, when we expose his works, he automatically loses power and we gain an advantage right. over him. And so I don't want to live my life, guys, with having Satan being advantageous over me. So we're going to expose him. Isaiah 513 says, therefore, my people have gone into captivity because they don't have knowledge. I feel the Holy Ghost already. Many of you have been, in capt have been captive to Satan because you don't have the knowledge to overcome him and i'm convinced this one thing if adam and eve would have known the snake was the devil they would have never obeyed him but say when we don't know the enemies we fight we end up obeying these enemies through ignorance and so we got to get in this place and that's one of the reasons alexander i love your ministry because you're exposing things other people are not exposing guys if you knew the movies you watched were open portals to demons and the things were coming out of your television you probably wouldn't be watching those shows if you knew the music you listened to was open portals you probably wouldn't be listening to it if you knew going to that psychic was going to open up portals you would have never went to the psychic if you knew that yoga was an open door to demons you wouldn't have done it if you knew that relationship was an open door to soul ties and demonic bondage so ignorance is not bliss guys let me just start by saying that ignorance is bondage when it comes to spiritual warfare and the only person that thinks ignorance is bliss is the spiritually lazy those that are lazy tonight are going to come up up in here and try to say oh you shouldn't talk about this you you shouldn't go there you shouldn't go there listen just because you guys aren't going there doesn't mean we're not going to go there we are going right to the gates of hell and we're going to assault the enemy's kingdom we're in a war there's an invisible war going on right now and it's time for us to wrestle against these things alexander i love what god is doing with you thank you for being here i'm excited for what you're going to share tonight let me, let me let me jump in also for those of you that are you know into yoga astrology astronomy whatever the case may be i think what people are looking for is what we would call inspiration you know and what they don't fail to realize is if you break the word inspiration down it means in spirit mm. let me just let me say that again let, let me say that again so for, for many of you that just say well what's wrong with yoga what, what's wrong with getting my palm red what's wrong with you know sage and what's wrong with uh, i'm just looking for some you know in a world that's filled with uh, a condemnation and discouragement i'm just looking for something uplifting and inspirational well if you do the prefixes to the word inspiration it means in spirit which means that the uplifting is coming from a spiritual source and from a spiritual realm and from a spiritual dimension now that opens a whole can of worms simply because there are a whole lot of spirits that are out there. And this is the reason why we're here today. We're going to be talking to you about the pantheon of gods that are out there. So that way we can move beyond the more popularized demons that people deal with, like Jezebel and witchcraft and Leviathan and Python and amen. Isaiah is going to uh, kind of briefly touch on that. But let me just tell you something. The kingdom of darkness is vast. It is mm. so vast that I'm going to use for the rest of tonight the typology of an ocean or an abyss. 
And this lets us know that the way the vastness of the ocean that covers the face of the earth, so is vast the kingdom of darkness. And we have to go beyond just some of the more popularized, you know, uh, things that are uh, expressed either in the secular world or in the Christian environment, there are demonic spirits that are least frequently talked about um, that I believe are Satan's weapons of mass destruction. Now let, now, now, let me just throw this out there so that way you could got to understand how to approach scripture when it comes to advanced spiritual warfare. Watch this, is whatever the Bible least frequently talks about is the most dangerous. Let me say it again. Whatever the Bible least frequently mentions actually is heaven's way of telling you these are the most dangerous. Let me give you an example. When was the last time you heard someone teach a message or a teaching series on vanity? No one... You can't remember, right? Because vanity only shows up in scripture at least two to three times throughout the Bible, making it the most the most dangerous. Also, let me ask you a question. When was the last time you actually heard a thorough, proper biblical study on the topic of gluttony? You don't talk about gluttony. Emma. So therefore, these are the demons of uh, the kingdom of darkness that are the, of the utmost. They are the most dangerous. They are the most dangerous, which is why these are Satan's weapons of mass destruction. But let me just kind of throw this out there for the theologians that are kind of watching and those of you that are kind of new. Even though we're going to be stressing the importance of understanding sometimes uh, these pantheon of gods, they are no match for Jesus Christ who sits on the throne. We are neither glorifying the devil, neither we are being coming demon conscious, looking for a demon under every rock. No, but we are doing what the apostle Paul said in Second Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter two. It says that the devil would not uh, take advantage of us, be, that we are not going to be ignorant of his devices. Also, we're not going to be ignorant of the strong men that use these devices. So that's kind of like uh, what we're going to be kind of talking about today. So put that as a rule of thumb, everyone, that whatever the Bible less frequently talks about, it's the most dangerous. As a matter of fact, let me even go a step further. We're talking to you about vanity. Actually, we're not going to really be talking about vanity today, but to, just to tell you how, uh, how dangerous vanity is, that it is one of the top demons that no one's talking about because we are on a network called Facebook. It actually is telling you, look at my face. Did you catch that revelation? Did you catch that revelation? What is vanity? Vanity is looking at yourself. It's taking a mirror and looking at yourself. Well, what is the network actually called? It's called Facebook. It means look at my face. Me, 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 me. Did you catch what I just said? Now watch this. Let me even go a step further to help break some, uh, maybe some, uh, maybe misinformed revelation concerning the devil. All right, you and I have been taught and you could go look this up. So have your Bible and pad and your pen ready. And if I'm talking fast, man, you guys should be used to this because I Isaiah talks faster than I do. All right. <laughs> Listen, you and I have been taught that Satan fell because of pride. But if you look at Ezekiel chapter 28, pride was the consequence of another sin that was there. The Bible says, because this other thing happened, your heart was lifted up with pride. So if you really read the text, pride was the consequence. It was the second thing. So you might be asking, what was the first thing? You can read this in Ezekiel 28. It says, because of your beauty. That's vanity right there. It says, because of the brightness of that which was inheritedly created and placed in you from the moment of your creation, therefore your heart was lifted up with pride. So vanity was actually the main sin. Why? Because vanity is falling in love with yourself. Did you catch what I just said? The devil was built so beautifully made by God that he fell in love with himself. And therefore he became vain with himself. The Bible says because of the multitude of his traffic and his tablets, which means all of uh, uh, everything that he was created with, he became vain. His vanity led to his pride. Watch this. Because you can't be prideful at something that you're not good at. Pride is the result 
of being good at something. Did, wait, 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 wait. Let me let me say that again. When a person becomes prideful, is because they are good at something. Someone who is horrible at something is not prideful. Why? Because they are horrible at it. But if you're beautiful to look at, you get prideful. If you're good at what you speak, you get prideful. If you're good at what you do, you get prideful. Pride is the direct result of excellence. Excellence causing a person to become vain. And the Bible says because of his beauty, because he was built so masterfully made, he was, as, as a matter of fact, God even called him the sum of perfection. He says, you were the cherub of perfection, but because of your perfection, you became vain. And because you became vain, iniquity was found in you and you became prideful and therefore I cast thee out. So by the time a person becomes prideful, there is a series of events that actually lead to that pride. Now watch this. I'm going to prove this even a step further. Now I gave you Ezekiel. Man, I'm talking good, man. You better say something in the chat room and say, Pagani, man, you talking good, man. Amen. Now look at this. Watch this. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. The Bible says, you and I know the story in Genesis chapter three, where the woman took the fruit, ate and gave to Adam. But if you really read the text in Genesis chapter three, before she ate, it says the fruit was beautiful to look at vanity. That's what it says. And desirable to eat, which means she looked at the fruit and the fruit looked good. Let me even give you an example. Have you ever looked at food and your mouth salivating? Well, what, it, what, what is actually happening? The food is causing, your, the food itself is causing the vanity. The vanity of, I need to eat that. Now that's exactly what happened. The fruit was vain. The Bible says, because she saw the fruit was beautiful to look at and desirable to eat, vanity, she ate. When she ate, pride kicked in. And that's when Lucifer's virus came down the bloodline. But let me ask you this question. After those two references of scripture, we don't find vanity coming up again, only up until the epistles, where the apostle Paul says, do nothing out of vain glory. That's the only time vanity shows up again. So we have Genesis chapter three, and then we have Ezekiel, thousands of years later, Ezekiel chapter 28. And then another thousands of years later, we find the apostle Paul talking about do nothing out of vanity. So it, watch this. So we have Let's just say seven, 6,000 years of biblical history. Let's just say if you're one of those uh, that believe that it's 1,000 years, 6,000 6, years of biblical history. That means within 6,000 years of biblical history, what we would understand as the Bible, canon, vanity only showed up three times. Want to know why? Because the devil works overtime to make sure that his weapon of mass destruction is not discovered. The Bible, the Bible is also letting us know, make sure that you absolutely pay attention. Baby, you don't got a pride issue. Baby, you got to watch out for that vanity issue. It's vanity. That's a problem. Now watch this. Let me even go a step further. Notice how vanity is also connected to what we would call cosmetics. Not that cosmetics is wrong. Nothing wrong with cosmetics, makeup. But watch this. Watch this, because when a woman buys a, 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 a vanity, it's basically a place where she could sit down and, and make and adorn herself to look more beautiful. Nothing wrong with that. My wife has one and my wife does it. But, 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 but watch this, look at this, look at this. The Bible says, do not be conformed, watch this, to this world. That word, world, is the word cosmos. It's where you and I get the word cosmetics. So let me, re let me read it to you in another way. Be not conformed to the vanity of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So watch this. So what's actually operating in the world, not that cosmetics is bad. Just, I'm just trying to help you understand the typology of words that are being used here to help you understand that. So, so basically the world is trying to put, put makeup on you. The world is trying to put 
a facade on you to make you appear as you as you don't appear. This is why the Bible says, be careful of the spirit of Jezebel. And that's why the apostle Paul began to even go a step further and say, women adorn yourself with modesty. Not saying that jewelry is wrong, but what I am saying is I'm trying to help you understand that this level of demonic warfare is not easily discovered by reading a book. You have to press in to be able to find what are Satan's weapons of mass destruction. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to uncover a pantheon of God's small G and demonic demons to help you begin to begin to go beyond Jezebel, Python, Leviathan, witchcraft, Ahab, rebellion, Absalom, uh, lost incubus, succubus, which we'll probably deal with those today. But there are a pantheon of other gods that we're going to deal with today. So good. And as you talk about it, I think a lot of people in the chat right now are, are starting to understand what they're battling, what they're going through. I know a lot of people when we do deliverance, they say, Isaiah, how is it possible that I've battled this demon for 20, 30, and you can even touch on this 40, 50 years, and I never knew it was there. And that's because no one was willing to call it out. Nobody was willing to confront the enemy. And this is one of the major issues right now in the body of Christ. Me and Alexander have both traveled extensively is that pastors are not willing to confront darkness. And I just want to challenge every single pastor watching. God is beginning to open up your eyes. I speak this over you to the powers of the enemy. One of the things I believe God is doing this year is God is exposing Satan's works. God is exposing Satan's network, Satan's strategies. Guys, when we're going against the demonic realm, we are going against Satan's global structure, his entire kingdom. I know some of you say, well, it's no big deal, brother. I'm just casting out one demon from my neighbor. Friend, you got to understand that you casting out one demon from your neighbor you are weakening and praise the lord we just broke 3,000 viewers you are weakening satan's entire structure god did not put you in that city to play church he did not put you in that city to sit around we have to identify the strong men in our neighbor in our neighborhoods in our marriages in our families in our ministries because until we're able to identify the strong men we'll never be able to bind the strong men. that's why jesus said you guys are trying to go in there and save your family, save your friends, save your community, get everybody saved and everyone gets first saved. They want to save everybody. But then you keep hitting that wall and you don't understand why are we not making breakthrough in our community? Why are we not break making breakthrough in our personal life? Why are we not making breakthrough in the spiritual realm? And Jesus said, because you haven't dealt with the strong man. You haven't dealt with the thing that's keeping people captive. And unless you first deal, come on, where are you guys at tonight? Unless you first deal with the strong man, you'll never be able to overthrow him. So we have to identify the strong man. We have to identify what is it that we're fighting. You know, even as you're sharing that, Alexander, people are saying, I never even understood. I battled this, yet many of us are battling with vanity. We're battling with pride. We're battling with the pleasures of life. And this was the children of Israel. Always the Bible says, following after the traditions and the norms of these pagan idols, these pagan gods, these pagan people, and living their life modeled after the world. And guys, you listen to me clear. Are we talking spiritual warfare? Yes. This, though, leads to a consecrated lifestyle. Jesus said, the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. The thing that gives us power over Satan is when we don't have anything in common with him. And some of you tonight, God is going to call you to get out of bed with Satan. God is gonna call you to break up with the snake. God is gonna call you to remove those toxic relationships that you're indulging in and to get free and to get delivered tonight. So I believe, as Alexander sharing, God is exposing guys, God is exposing you he's exposing me he's exposing areas of our life that we don't know and listen even as alexander shares i want some of you that might think you knew this or you knew that let let go of everything you think you knew and say god i want to learn i want to just delete press delete on everything i thought i knew about spiritual warfare about your kingdom because god wants to speak to some of you and some of you're going to say oh i already this or i already feel this or i already feel that just open up your heart open up your mind and let the holy spirit speak as we begin to dive into some of this stuff Let's You're good. I hear you good. Oh, okay. My, my okay. I just wanted to make sure you guys yeah, you're coming in smooth here. <laughs> okay. Uh let's jump into this thing. 
I need to know those of you that are watching in the chat room if you're ready. I want to dive into the Word of God a little bit, um, and that way we can lead up until a couple of uh, other demons that we kind of really want to address. But I first want to lay this out because I do want to talk about a little bit about the Nephilim, about the Nephilim mm. today, and how and how we can get into uh, that. But first, let me let me let, let me say this. Let me say this. That let's first start off with what the Bible describes as the word abyss. Come on. A B Y S S, the word abyss. Now, the word abyss, you can find it in a whole bunch of portions of scripture, but the first time we actually find the word abyss is in the book of Genesis. Uh, Genesis chapter one, verse two. All right. It says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without void and darkness was on the was upon the face of the of the deep. So the word deep is synonymous. Uh, the word deep is synonymous with the word abyss. Now, if you connect the word abyss with the word deep, the word waters are in there. So I, 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 I want to help you understand so that you can biblically see where where i'm headed now look at this because i'm trying to see if we could go down the marine spirits i want to kind of go down that trail but before we go there i want to i want you to see it so so when the bible says the spirit of the lord moved upon the face of the deep that word deep is the word abyss or abysmal or where we would get the word the waters so many times you have read in scripture where it says god separated the waters from the heavens and the waters below basically what he was saying is that god was separating the the abyss from the heavens so with the word abyss and the word waters this opens up a whole new world because many of you don't know this the the word abyss or the word waters in the beginning was actually a prison it was not just waters it was not just waters like we would think, oh, that water it has always existed and it was just water, H2O. No, no, no. It was a typology. It is a wordplay. The word abyss is also in the New Testament synonymous with bottomless pit. So bottomless pit, abyss, deep, deep, or the waters are actually all the same place. So what's actually happening in the text here, God is saying that the spirit of God was the warden over the prison. That he was, his spirit was moving over the prison and under the waters was a prison house. Now within the prison, these were the demonic entities that had fell uh, during the time of Satan. Now we don't, now, now watch this, we don't know exactly what happened during that time, but you and I understand it as the gap theory, which means that there was a cataclysmic uh, event that happened uh, in the heavens where the sons of God rebelled, uh, Satan and his angels rebelled against the most high and they were banished to the bottomless pit or they were banished to the waters or they were banished to the abyss. And at that time, the spirit of God was keeping them encased encased in that prison and then god began to create the heavens and the earth so let's first establish that, that this is not just waters in the beginning for just water's sake uh h2o the element that you and i drink no this is typology there so the abyss is actually a prison so in the beginning there was a prison and the spirit of god moved and hovered over the prison and had those prisoners locked in the abyss at that time and then god began to create the heavens and the earth and then you and i understand the creation story now if you were to embrace that topic or that word abyss then this would allow you to open up your level of understanding in the realm of the demonic why because if you turn with me to leviticus leviticus chapter 11 i want to read something to you so that you can see this leviticus chapter 11 Leviticus chapter 11, verse 9. Many of you have read this and probably skipped over it, or many of you have read it and probably fell asleep. Like many people that read Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you kind of skip over that and go right into some of the more juicier biblical stories and events. But actually, Leviticus chapter 11 dedicates a whole chapter to unclean animals. Now, if you read it in its historical context, it's actually talking about unclean animals. But 
The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed, and the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, which means in its proper context, it's talking about unclean animals. But in the spiritual context, it is actually letting us know that these unclean animals are also a representation of different ranks and different categories of demonic spirits. This is why when you read in the book of Mark, when Legion came out of the man, he went right into the swine, a herd of swine. Why? Because swine is also categorized in Leviticus chapter 11 as an unclean land animal. Now, Leviticus 11 is broken down to three categories. You got uh, unclean animals of the air, unclean animals of the land, and then you got unclean animals that dwell in the waters. Now, I don't want to talk about air and I don't want to talk about uh, land because man can discover those animals by pure virtue of investigation or, you know, searching it out. But there's still one realm that you and I have not even cracked one thirds of that even up to this all of these years. And that is what happens under the waters. Now watch this. Let me read. Let me let me read this to you. So that way, I want you to be able to see this. So that way, you can see the category of this. Look at this. Leviticus chapter eleven, verse nine says, "Of all marine animals, these are the ones you may use for food. You may eat anything from the water if it has both fins and scales, whether they're from the salt water or from the streams." But look at verse ten. But you must never eat animals from the sea or from the rivers that do not have both fins and scales. They are detestable for you. Now stop right there. Notice how the text here doesn't say they're unhygienic for you. It says they are detestable for you. Detestable is a moral term. Let me say that again. Detestable is a moral term term, not a hygienic term. So, you know, so most people that they get religious and read this and think, okay, God is saying, don't eat shrimp. And God is eat, saying, don't eat lobster. All right. Now, yes, those animals might particularly be scavenger animals and they, they can be potentially unhygienic, but God would not tell you that they are detestable for you if detestable is a moral term. Moral term means it's an issue of conscience, which means there's spirituality going on here. Now look what it says here. It says, they are detestable to you. This applies both to little creatures that live in the shallow water and to all creatures that live in the deep water. All right, or rather that live in the abyss. Look at this. They will always be detestable for you you will, you must never eat their meat and you must never even touch their dead bodies. Wait a second. How is touching? Look at, look, look at the same. This is how I know that this is not about hygiene and about how unhealthy this animals are, because what does it have to, what is unhealthy about touching a dead animal? Do you see how this has nothing to do with physical but this has everything to do with spiritual why because there are certain there are certain things that from from the demonic realm that god don't even want you touching or eating it spiritually did you catch what i just said so this right here is a typology concerning us looking at things from a different perspective now the reason why i am sharing this with you and i hope i'm not losing many of you but rather you're seeing it from a revelatory perspective is this that this here is not talking about unhealthy animals in its proper context it is but let me ask you this question why would god tell them uh when he gave them these laws not to eat animals from the deep when they are a nomadic people in the desert do you see what I'm saying? The children of Israel are a nomadic people. They are a people of shepherding. There's no sea in the desert. So why would God tell them to abstain from sea creatures when they are walking in the wilderness of Zen for 40 years and there's no sea? That's because this right here is talking about spiritual things, spiritual things. All right, so watch this. Now, the reason why I, I, had, I put the foundation of this simply is this. Let me ask you this question. How many deep sea creatures are there in the deep as of today? There are an innumerable amount. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. 
Wait a second. Look at this. We haven't even scratched the surface of how we are still discovering. Wait a second. We are still listen, listen, listen. Deep uh, uh, deep seamen are still every year discovering particular deep uh, sea creatures, or they are discovering this kind of creature. What did Jesus say? This this kind of demon. Now, why did he say this? Because they couldn't cast it out. Why couldn't they cast it out? Because they had never seen that demon before. Okay, now, now why am I saying this? Is church, we need an upgrade. Listen, listen, watch this. If the children of Israel went to the Jordan River, obviously there's fish in there. There's creatures in there. If they went to the Sea of Galilee, obviously there's fish in there, but there's creatures in there. There's creatures in there, but the Sea of Galilee is an enclosed sea. The River Jordan is, is, a, is a stream from the Sea of Galilee. Now, what, what am I saying by this is that after a while, if you investigate long enough, you're going to encounter the same fish both in the Jordan and in the Sea of Galilee. So that's what we're doing today. We are fishing in the same pond of the Jezebel, Ahab, witchcraft, Absalom, Leviathan. Baby, I'm here to tell you that those spirits, that's level one. We haven't even scratched the surface. We haven't even gone deep enough. God says if you go deeper enough, the church will begin to uncover New demonic spirits. Let me give you one that was just discovered last year. It's called a demon called COVID-19. Well, that didn't exist two, three years ago. That's a new demon. Now watch this. The reason why I am saying this is, baby, the ocean, the abyss is vast. We have not scratched the surface. And the church is still playing Willy Wonka, Chuck E. Cheese with and Absalom spirit and witchcraft and rejection. I'm here to tell you, go deeper, go deeper. Because listen to me, listen to me. What you are dealing with in your family bloodline might not be a Jezebel, might not be a Leviathan. It might be a whole new breed of demon that we haven't even explored yet because the church has not gotten deep enough. And that's why we are here today. Why? Because Mar the marine kingdom, not marine spirits, but the marine kingdom is vast. It is so vast. This is why I have a problem with people saying, man, you're demonizing everything. We're not demonizing everything, but there's a lot of demons out there that we have not yet to be discovered. So watch this on earth as it is in heaven. So the same way that humans are discovering deep sea creatures as they get technology to go deeper and to go deeper. And to go deeper, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter two, those that had not known the depths of Satan, it actually uses D-E-P-T-H. It's the same word, the abyss of Satan, or rather the bottomless pit of evil. Evil is a science. Evil is an ocean. This is why in the end time, in the book of Revelation, the Bible says that the beast comes out of the sea. Did you catch that revelation? Listen, the Bible actually says the beast and the Antichrist comes actually out of the sea, which means that there is a whole vast kingdom down there that you and I have to allow the Holy Spirit to help us jump into deep waters for God to begin uh, to reveal it. I'm going to throw it back at you to jump in and then we'll continue. And then I have some more revelation. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, this stuff is straight fire. I'm like, just keep going for it. This is just, I'm, I'm right here taking notes and learning as he's teaching, because I'm telling you guys, God is exposing some of these things. You know, one of the things I'll just give you a, a second break here that I wanted to touch on, which is actually part of the Marine kingdom. I know we talked about Leviathan, that sea serpent, but is, and this is a very practical thing for many of you watching tonight, is the spirit of Python. This is something Alexander, I 
feel like has really attached and really connected to the church, to the believer, to many of you watching. And I'll keep it very, very simple. And I'll, I'm, I'm going to pass it back here. But very simply, this spirit that has attacked many people watching is trying to cut off your prayer life. Friend, you have to understand that many of these demonic powers, these demonic spirits goal, their end goal is to get the church to stop praying. Now, many of you might ask, is the devil effective right now in the church? Absolutely. Look at the state of the American church. There's a lack of prayer. There's a lack of consecration. There's a lack of holiness because the the, de the devil wants to shut down your prayer life. More than anything else, the devil's trying to stop you from praying. I know people are saying, well, we can't gather in the church. And my thought is we weren't even praying when we were gathering. The devil's not threatened by our gathering. The devil is threatened by a church and a people that prays. Many times in deliverance, uh, 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 Alexander, we see people slithering like a snake. How many of you guys have seen this? I was praying for somebody this last week and they're slithering like a snake. And we see this snake manifestation all the time. And this is a connection to the marine kingdom, to the spirit of Python, to the spirit of Leviathan. But oftentimes this Python spirit will wrap around the believer and choke the prayer life out of you. Prayer has to be, and we've been saying this for the last few months, the life source of the believer. It's the oxygen to our spirit. Listen to me loud and clear tonight. If you you don't have a prayer life you will not survive the days ahead let me say that again if you don't have a prayer life and I'm not talking about praying for your food I'm not talking about praying at night before you go to bed I'm saying that if you don't have a consistent prayer life in the days that are coming okay we'll go into that another another podcast but the days that are ahead of us the spiritual battle that we're going into the storm that we're going into you are not going to survive now the enemy knows the power of prayer why is it that he's working overtime that his kingdom is working overtime to shut the mouth of the believer to stop you from praying some of you know because you're dealing with the python spirit which makes you fall asleep during prayer some of you every time you go into prayer you start falling asleep that's a result of a snake or of a python spirit some of you get easily distracted in prayer every time you pray how many of you know every time you pray you're looking at your phone you're looking at your calls you're looking at your friend you're looking at this you're thinking about what you're going to eat. That's the spirit of Python working to distract you. Some of you have lost your appetite for prayer. You have zero desire to communicate with God. How is it that we are believers, but we've lost our desire to pray? We've lost our desire to call into God. That's the spirit of Python at work. Again, choking out the life of the people of God. Now, Paul encountered this. I'm going to go quick here. Paul encountered this spirit on his way to prayer. The devil loves to distract us on our way to prayer. Acts 16, 16 says it happened as they were going to prayer. So notice where the demon attacks Paul. A slave girl having a spirit of Python, which your other Bible is going to say divination, in the new translations, met us who bringing her master much profit by fortune telling, following Paul around, kept crying out saying, these are men of the most high God who are proclaiming you the way of salvation. She continued doing this. The Bible says for many days and so many of you have dealt with this spirit for many days and have not gotten deliverance some of you are around believers around pastors for years and still don't get deliverance Paul was greatly annoyed and turned and said to the spirit Paul's not talking to the girl Paul's talking to the spirit I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and the Bible says it came out within the hour but notice this the Greek word for divination which we taught a lot about divination that's getting information from demons from spirits that's fortune telling psychics astrology these all use the means of divination which is a counterfeit of the word of knowledge but this word is python this is a spirit in greek mythology was a serpent or dragon that guarded the oracle delphi and was slain by apollo but that's greek mythology but notice this it's not just a Greek myth because the spirit was in this girl coming against Paul. And friend, I want to tell you that the spirit, even tonight, is coming against the body of Christ. Now, I don't have an open door. This spirit attacked Paul when there was no open door. This spirit wants to shut you down. Paul was a man of the word, a man of holiness, a man of prayer. And this spirit was against Paul. This spirit has shut down countless churches. This spirit has shut down prayer meetings. A lot of people, you go to a church where you say, we don't even have a prayer meeting. And this is an epidemic right now in the body of Christ. That many believers and many churches do not have a prayer meeting. And friend, I'm telling you, if you don't pray, if you don't have a prayer life, you will not survive. Every time you try to take a breath, that python squeezes that prayer life out of you. And it's a slow process. The way a python kills its victim is a slow process. It's not something that happens quick 
quick, but it's a slow process. It's not just one day you stop praying, but after a certain amount of time, that, that spirit chokes out your prayer life. Slowly but surely, you lose your desire to pray. You lose your fire to pray. And imagine how many of these spirits have killed people in the chat. How many of you have fallen subject to the spirit of Python? And I just want to say, and then I'm going to pass it back here. We need a prayer revival in our lives. We need to break all these marine spirits, all these demonic powers. I believe tonight is your night to get delivered because these things have been lying to the body of Christ. Let me give you one more interesting thing about the spirit of Python. What's crazy is the serpent or the spirit of Python attacked Paul while going to prayer and the Bible says Paul and Silas ended up naked and being beat with rods because they delivered this girl. So they deliver the girl, her masters lose their profit from fortune telling, and now Paul and Silas are naked, they're distracted now, they're not able to go to prayer, and they're beat down. Now let's look at what did the spirit of Python or the snake do in the garden. It separated Adam and Eve from relationship with God, so it removed Adam and Eve's prayer life, just like it did in the book of Acts, and it left Adam and Eve naked like it did in the book of Acts. What's your point, Isaiah? My point is, what was happening in Genesis was still happening all the way in the book of Acts, and is still happening today as we preach, as we prophesy. You might be listening saying, well, these spirits are from the Old Testament, or the things you guys are sharing about are from the Old Testament, but don't you see here that these spirits from the Old Testament, these demons are actually relevant in the New Testament. I'm gonna pass it back. You could just take over here, Alexander. I'm telling you, I know we're 40 minutes in here, guys, but I'm telling you, we don't have a time limit, but I'm just saying, guys, God is doing something. God is connecting something, and I don't believe it's by chance. There's 3,400 of you in here, and a lot of you, including me, are learning a lot of this for the first time. God is taking us. Again, I have his advanced school in the comments, so you're already getting a taste tonight of the stuff that he's bringing, and I'm telling you guys, no one's bringing it like this. No one's teaching it like this. God is doing something right now in the body of Christ. So go ahead, take it away here. I'm gonna pass it back to you. I remember one time I was conducting deliverance um, and the person, and this is no exaggeration, uh, the person, one minute I'm conducting deliverance, me and my wife, we were conducting deliverance on one of the uh, members of our church. And I, I, I blinked and I put my head down for a split second. And when I put my, and when I lifted my head back up, I was looking at, and I'm not exaggerating. I was looking at a silverback gorilla. And I don't mean a silverback gorilla, like in its, in its entirety. What I mean was the person's face and body features had contorted to such a degree that literally I was looking at King Kong. I'm not exaggerating. And the, the nostrils were flaring so much. Literally, they were like this. Literally. And I looked at it and immediately the Holy Spirit said, that's a spirit of rage. Confront the spirit of rage. And that's when, and that's when I began my journey to connect animalistic behavior with demonic spirits. At that time, I was just casting out spirits and I had no time to like literally get into the logistics of that. But when God began to tell me, uh, stop being so quick to just cast it out. Uh, let me teach you how to do asymmetric warfare here. Slow down a little bit. Work with the person. Help the person get set free. Don't just be storefront Pentecostal, you know what I'm saying, and do a lot of yelling because, you know, you, you know, take your time so let me just show you how to do uh, real good warfare. Split second, I put my head down, look back up. I was literally looking at um, a silverback gorilla right in front of me. Um, the power of God hit this person. They got delivered. But that began the journey of me connecting um, the reason why uh, God put in the scripture various uh, an animals to help us understand demonic uh, demonic behavior. This is why he would consistently talk about when someone um, has a gossiping spirit. They're called a viper. Their words are like a viper uh, uh, whose words cause venom inside of me. So God is saying, pay attention to the animal kingdom and you'll begin to correlate that with demonic entities. I remember another time I was con I was conducting deliverance on uh, this, uh, this mother. Um, and again, I took my eye eyes off of her for a split second and put it on my wife. And when I look back, this person was literally doing, um, um, like a stripper, like a stripper in a strip club was literally doing, was, was not stripping her clothes in front of me, but reenacting like as she was on a strip pole right in front of me. It was so bad that I actually had to turn my eyes away because the Spirit of God said, the Spirit of seduction is trying to distract you right now uh, and doesn't want to come out. And I had to literally, me and my wife, my wife had to jump in and we had to get her uh, delivered. It was literally a snake going up a pole. And I began to understand how, how Moses put a snake up a pole on a pole. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, so we find animalistic 
or particular animals in scripture in the Bible to help us understand demonic uh, behavior. With that being said, let me read something to you to help you understand this pantheon of gods without us glorifying the devil here. But look at this. Let me let me let me help you uh, see this in scripture. Deuteronomy chapter thirty-two. I want you to see something because you're probably saying, "Well, where can we find that in scripture? All this stuff about spirit this and spirit that and spirit that." Let's just stick, let's stick to scripture here. I'm glad that you're I'm glad that you're being a good Berean. <laughs> I'm going to show this to you. Look at this. Look what it says. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 16. It says, they stirred up his jealousy by worshiping foreign gods. They provoked his fury with detestable deeds. Okay, look at this. Look at this. They offered sacrifice to demons, which are not God. To gods, look at this part. Look at this part right here. To gods they have not known before. To new gods. Wait a second here. Wait a second here. Look what it says. To new gods only recently arrived. What is the text here actually saying? Is that there is an arrival of new gods. Man, I'm talking good. Guys, you got to listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. There are demons that the devil or the kingdom of darkness is waiting until the world has the right conditions. Let me say it again. When, when, when the world gets to a certain place and the spiritual condition is ready, he'll send a new, he'll send a new God or a new demon and a demon will pop up out of nowhere and the people will go chasing after this particular God. As a matter of fact, I could even prove this even a step further. There's a demon coming in the book of Revelation called Wormwood. It hasn't come yet, but eventually wormwood will come to the earth, will strike the earth. And the Bible says when wormwood comes, it will be a star. I saw a star from heaven fall down to the earth. Now, if you want to say it's a meteorite, amen, you could do that. But actually, the Bible calls the stars of heaven angels. It calls them angels. So when it says a star from heaven fell down to the earth and the star's name was Wormwood and it made the waters bitter, it means that the world was now finally ready for this particular demon and the kingdom of darkness released it and heaven allowed it. And the Bible says that this demon killed off a third of the earth. Now, so, 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 so watch this. These new gods that the Bible here is talking about is talking about, write this in the room, the sons of God, the rebellious sons of God. Now, we, I said everything leading to this point so that we could get into the other demons. These new gods are the fallen Elohims. You keep thinking Elohim only means God. No, the word Elohim in scripture means it's plural. It means gods. It means divine beings. God is supreme Elohim. He is God, the supreme Elohim. And all of his creation, when he created the sons of God, the angels, they are also called the benai. Elohim, the Benai Elohim, which means the, they are from the Elohim. So they are Elohims. Now watch this. When you become born again, the Bible calls you children of God. You are also an Elohim. You're not V Elohim. You're not capital E Elohim. That is God the Father. But you and I are Elohims. That is why Jesus said, behold, I say you are gods. He was talking to the people, which means you proceedeth and come forth from God. You are a son of God. Now, before God created Adam, who was a son of God, there was an elder race. Write it in the chat room. There are, is an elder race, which means there were sons of God. Now watch this. Now watch this. Look at this. I'm going to show this to you. Is, if, this, if this is good, say something in the chat room. <laughs> Listen, watch this. Look at this. I want to show it to you. Let's go to the book of Job. Turn with me to the book of Job. I want to show you something. The book of Job. Watch this. The book of Job. Look at this. All right. Look at this. Watch this. The book of Job. All right. In the book of Job. Watch this. Look at this. Job chapter 38, verse 7. Watch this. Job 
38, verse 7. Watch this. I'm going to show you something, and then it's going to get into the sons of God. Look at this. Job uh, 38, verse 7. Look at this. Look at this. As a matter of fact, let's go to verse 4 in context. Where were you, this is God talking, when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? Verse 6. What supports its foundation and who laid its cornerstone? Look at verse 7. Look at this. Look at this. In the King James Version, look what it says. Look what it says. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now, this is not talking about the sons of God, you and I. It's talking about, watch this, two categories of angels. The morning stars which is Lucifer. Lucifer is a morning star. There's a category, Lucifer and his angels. That's, did you catch that? And then it says, where the sons of God also shouted for joy. So at the beginning of creation, there was also the morning star shouting for joy, rejoicing, and the sons of God. So the sons of God are a particular other category of angels. They all fall on the angels. The highest category is morning star. The head of the morning stars was Lucifer. Oh, son of the morning, morning stars, all right? How thou art fallen from heaven, O oh, Lucifer, O oh, morning star. The devil and his angels, the morning stars. But wait a second, there's another category. The sons of Elohim. Notice how morning stars are separate. Then there's the sons of God, the benign Elohim. Now, here's what happened. We know the story of when the devil fell with his angels. But the Bible actually is letting us know, and you could go read this, and this is going to be very controversial, but if I don't lay this foundation, then other demons makes no sense. There was another angelic rebellion found in Genesis chapter 6. Turn with me there. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Look at this. Genesis chapter 6. Look at this. We're talking about new gods. We're talking about new gods that just arrived. Look at this. Genesis chapter 6. Look what it says. In Genesis, look what it says. In Genesis chapter 6, it says in verse, look at this, in verse Look what it says in verse, watch this, verse 4. In those days, look at this. Matter of fact, let me read it in the King James Version for you because I have it in the New Living Translation. If this is good, say something in the chat room. All right? Look at this, 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 look at this. Okay, look at this. Okay, look what it says. Uh, Genesis chapter 6, it says, um, there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. Look what it says. When the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bare children unto them. The same became the Nephilim, mighty men, men of renown, uh, the heroes of old. So what happened was this. Very simple. The Benai Elohim in the Bible are called the Watchers. You can read this in D Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8, the sons of God were called the watchers. What were their assignment? There were, at, watch this, after God created the heavens and the earth, but the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. Why? Because the sons of God were given an assignment. The assignment was to watch over the affairs of men to make sure that the human population would go according to God's plan. In between that time frame, Lucifer fell, we get the abysmal, the abyss, and them being locked in somewhere else, right? But the, the watchers began to fall in love with the daughters of men. And the Bible says uh, that they came down and slept with the daughters of men. Now, now I know what many of you are going to tell me. You're going to say, but that's impossible because angels, angels neither marry are given in marriage. Read the text. It says in heaven, they neither marry or are given in marriage. So what did the angels do? They left their first estate. They left heaven. They left heaven. Why? Because in heaven, there is neither marriage nor are given in marriage. Did you catch that? The Bible says they came down. They came down, right? They slept with the daughters of men, Right and produce a race of giants called the Nephilim, which are a hybrid race whose fathers are the fallen 
rebellious sons of God, the watchers that fell, watch this, the watchers that fell, sleeping with the daughters of men, right? And this is the reason why God, watch this, God decided, look at what it says, God decided in the very same chapter that he was tired of the wickedness of man. But if you keep reading the text, it says he was not only, watch this, he was not only mad with man, the text says he was also mad with animals. He was mad with the animals. And we know he was mad with the animals. Why? Because the serpent deceived the serpent. Wait, did you catch what I just said? Wait a second. Who deceived Eve? The Bible says the serpent, the physical serpent, gave its body to the serpent. And they deceived Eve. This is why, watch this. When God cursed the serpent, why would God curse something that's already cursed if the devil was already cursed? Do you see what I'm saying here? Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Why would God curse a serpent if the serpent was already cursed? I'm talking about the spiritual serpent. This is why the serpent had two judgments, two judgments in the text. The physical serpent got cursed and then the spiritual serpent got banished. All right, now watch this. When God destroyed the earth with the flood, the spirits of the Nephilim, because they are unregistered, and this is all Bible, what I'm t telling you, because they are unregistered with the courtroom of heaven, they have been banished to wander the earth. Watch this, to wander the earth until the end time judgment. And this is why you and I are battling with disembodied spirits of the Nephilim, but this is debatable. You could debate me on that and I'll allow it because this is progressive revelation, but this is where we get the pantheon of new gods. Why? Because when God judged the sons of God, and this is how you know that this is what I'm saying is biblically true, because when God judged the watchers for what they did, the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 2, he locked them in Tartarus. But wait a second. The Bible says, 2 Peter says, and the angels that sinned, he says he has banished them in chains, chains until the end time. Wait a second. So then who is doing all the functioning on the earth if these demons or these sons of God are locked, are locked in chains? We're well, very simple. The disembodied spirits of the Nephilim are the ones doing the work and the fallen angels, the devil and his angels are all working. Now watch this. All of these demons or angels, they're all under Lucifer. They're all under Lucifer. But there are many different categories. Now watch this. I'm going to prove this to you one more verse, and then we'll name some demons that you never heard before. And then, But you could jump in while I, while, while, while I go look for this verse. Okay, so Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Watch this. Deuteronomy. Look at this. Deuteronomy chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 32. Watch this. The very... The very same book, Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. Watch this. Look at this. Look at this. Deuteronomy uh, verse 2. Look what it says. Let me read it to you. Look what it says. Look at this. It says, when the Most High, watch this. When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Now stop right there. There's something wrong in the text already. Why? Because it's using the word Israel. Now the story that he's referring to here when God divided the nations, who could say who could tell me in the chat room what exactly is Moses referring to? He's referring to the Tower of Babel. He's referring to the Tower of Babel. Now watch this. Watch this. Why would God separate the nations according to the sons of Israel when the sons of Israel did not even exist yet? Very simple. Because the real translation of the text in the Septuagint, in the Hebrew, says it like this. Look at this. Look at this. Let me read it to you. It says, it says when the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, which means when he separated the nations, Genesis chapter 11, it says, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the sons of God. Okay, that word sons of God means 
the fallen angels. He gave the nations to the fallen angels who were overseeing these nations. This is why Daniel, when he fasted and he prayed, he was asking for an answer. Gabriel was sent. But what did Gabriel tell him? He said, from the first day that you prayed, Daniel, he said, the first day that you prayed, I was sent. But the son of God, the fallen prince of the Medo-Persian was holding me back for 21 days. And he said, and he said, now I must leave you because there's another fallen son of God that's coming. It, the fallen prince of Greece is coming and I have to go help Michael. So what? These fallen sons of God are over, are over, are over the nation. So this is why we find that every nation on the face of the earth has a prince, a son of God for them. Israel has a prince over it. We know his name, Michael. Michael is the prince, a divine Elohim. He is a son of God, an angel. He is overseeing Israel, every nation has an angel. And here's, here's the issue. These fallen, some nations are given over to demonic entities. We know this, right? These fallen entities have demons under them. And here is where the category opens. And you and I need to expand our thinking. So that way we could go beyond Jezebel. Who else is working for the devil? What other demons are working? Now watch this. Now watch this. Look at this. Watch this. You might be asking, well, how does this work? How does this work? What is this going to do with other demons? Very simple. Because many people that are saying was nobody's worshiping demons. Like nobody's going to go out, out, right? Like look, for those of you, watch this. For those of you that use sage, and I'm going to go there with you. You can't remove demon with demons. All right. Okay. Sage is a, is a, a, a demonic form. It's an ancient form of witchcraft to remove spirits through uh, through the aroma, to remove the... So the person with sage will go to every room and, and hopefully smoke the devil out. All right. But you can't fight the devil with the devil. All right. Now watch this. Now watch this. The person that uses sage, if you were to ask them, they will tell you, man, I'm not worshiping no... I'm not worshiping no devil, no demon. And here is where Christians mess up. Because these new pantheon of gods is not coming in the form of demon worship. They are coming in the form of veneration, honor, or venerated worship. What do I mean by this? Let me give you an example. If you ask a Catholic, do you worship Mary? They will flatly tell you, I do not worship Mary. I worship the Son of God. But what do they do? They venerate Mary. What does the word venerate mean? It means to hold in high regard and to revere profoundly. So what does this do? People don't, people are not worshiping demons, but they're venerating the devices that the demons have left behind and the veneration of, or the extreme Honor. Let me give you an example. When you read your horoscope, let me say it again. When you read your horoscope, you're not, you're not worshiping the 12 constellations, but you're venerating it. You know how I know you're venerating it? Because you read it daily. You're holding it with high regard. And that's where the demons come in. They don't come in with flat out demon worship, right? But they come in through venerated honor, which means when you hold in high regard uh, 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 a statue of a saint, you're not bowing down to the saint, but you're venerating it. And the veneration is where the demon comes in. Now watch this. And the veneration of the demon brings the new God or other demons. And that's where most Christians mess up because they'll hear a Christian say, you know, sage is wrong. And they'll say, man, yeah, people are, yeah, Christians need to stop acting up. I ain't, I ain't worshiping no devil. No, but you're venerating. You're venerating the sage. And the, the venerating of the sage is where the demon comes in. So it's a, it is still demon worship. You're not worshiping the demon itself, but you're worshiping the function of the demon. 
Did you catch what I just said? So you're, nobody's worshiping Mary, but you're worshiping, you're worshiping the mediator to the mediator because she's the mediator to the mediator. So we'll, we'll honor Mary in hopes that Mary will put in a good word to her son, Jesus. And that's where the demon, uh, that's where the demon is, is coming in. Am I making, am I making sense? Do you want a Bible verse? Watch this. I'm going to prove this to you. What? I'm going to prove this to you. And then I'm going to pass it to you. I'm going to pass it to Isaiah. Watch this. Turn with me to second Kings, second Kings. Watch this. For those of you that are watch, for those of you, watch this. Have you ever heard somebody say you can make an idol out of anything? Well, how do you do that? By venerating something. When you venerate something, which means you hold it with high regard. Uh, 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 look, look at this. Let me give you an example. When you do this, and don't get mad if you do this, because sometimes we, we all did this. But when you go, God, I need you to speak to me. And then you do this. God, speak to me. God, I need you to speak to me. Okay. And then you just open, and then wherever it falls, that's how God is speaking to, speaking to you. That's not how God speaks to you. That is, watch this, that is you venerating an incantation of how you think God speaks to you. That's no different than putting your Bible under your pillow, thinking that putting a Bible under your pillow is going to give you good dreams. You're venerate. Listen, we don't venerate a of black letters on a white page. We we worship the God of the pages, not the pages of the Bible. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, watch this. I'm going to show you this to show you how this works. And therefore, we'll get into, look at this. Man, this is some good stuff. You need to share this. Look at this. <laughs> I know that I'm rushing, but hey, amen. I'm just trying to pack in so much. Look at this. Second, Second Kings chapter 18. Watch this. Second Kings chapter 18. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how we do this. Look at this. Look at this. Second Kings chapter 18 talks about a man named Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a good king of Israel. He was a good king. Look at this. Look at this. Second Kings chapter 18, verse, verse, look at this. Verse three. He did, he did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. Just as his ancestor David had done, he removed the pagan shrines. Listen, listen closely. Watch this. He removed the pagan shrines, smashed the sacred pillars, cut down the Asherah poles. Watch this. He broke up. Look at this. Look at this. Look what it says. He also broke up the bronze serpent that Moses had made. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at this, look at this. He also broke up the bronze serpent that Moses had made because the people of Israel had been offering sacrifices to it. Wait a second. Wait a second. He destroyed the bronze serpent that Moses made because a thousand years later, the children of Israel was worshiping it. They were venerating it. Look at this. Look at this. Was the bronze serpent a bad thing? No, it was not. Why? Because if you read Numbers chapter 21, all who got bitten by a snake, venomous, all they had to do was go to the temple, find the bronze serpent that Moses had made, and whoever looked at it was healed from their diseases. But guess what? In the beginning, they worshiped the God of healing, but a thousand years later, they worship the healing that comes from God. Let me say it again. This is what happens when you and I worship more manifestation than the God of manifestation. We begin to worship. Let me give you an example. Deliverance is not vomiting. Let me say it again. Sometimes people worship, they venerate the vomiting, which means 
unless I vomit, I didn't get delivered. Now watch this. When you get delivered and when there's a demon, there will be vomiting. But you don't enter into deliverance looking for the vomiting because then it's no different than worshiping and venerating the vomiting. And that's why many people don't get delivered because the deliverance is not, well, I didn't manifest. Well, I didn't, my eyes didn't roll back. I didn't slither on the floor like a snake. No, 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 no. We're not worshiping the, we're not worshiping the, we're not venerating the function. We're honoring the function but afterwards, sometimes we might need to do what Hezekiah did in destroying. Now watch this. Let me, let me finish reading the text. Look at this. Look at this. Look at, look what the verse says. The bronze serpent was called Nahushtan. Whoa. I bet you never even heard of a demon called Nahushtan. Nahushtan, write this down makes people worship the function rather than the God who empowers the function. The Bible says that a thousand years later, Moses' serpent was actually given a name. It says here, so when Hezekiah came on the scene, he noticed that the people were worshiping Speaking in tongues. Oh, y'all gonna get mad at me today. You're gonna get mad. You're gonna get mad. You're gonna get mad. You're gonna get mad. He noticed that the people were, were worshiping a particular way that God does something. Let me tell you something. If God does something today, it doesn't mean that that's the way he's always gonna do it as he continues to move forward. But in this text, they began to worship. They began to worship the bronze snake that Moses made. Watch this. And this is why sometimes the deliverance minister has to make sure that as I teach you how to function and how to get healed, that you don't start worshiping the protocols of healing as opposed to putting your eyes on him. Because, because if left alone, it will end up becoming venerated. And a thousand years later, the people were venerating these particular uh, 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 these particular um, bronze serpent, and they began to worship it. And in this text, Hezekiah had to destroy it because the people were now idolizing it. Now, I just gave you Nahushtan. Nahushtan causes, causes people to worship the way God used to do something and they begin idolizing the way God used to do something, and, they're, and they can't open themselves up to see the way God is doing something, something now. Now watch this. Turn with me now to a couple of chapters before. Now we're going to get into some stuff. Second, second, second. <laughs> you can jump in any time, Isaiah. You can jump in any time. Go ahead, go ahead. Look at, look at this. Now, I'm not looking at the chat room because uh, I don't want to get distracted with somebody saying, I don't understand that. I don't understand. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> okay, now look at this. All right, look at this. Okay, look, look what it says here. Now, can you guys still hear me? Is, it, is this good? All right, look at this. Watch this. Look at this. Watch this. Second, second Kings chapter, uh, chapter 17. Look at this. Look at this. Second Kings chapter 17. Jump down. Look at this. Look at this. Jump down. All right. Give me a second here. Yeah, jump down. Okay. All right. Give me a second. Let me find it for you. I know it's in Second Kings. Isaiah, what what uh what 17? What verse, what verses did I give you? Because I'm using a different, a different, a different verse. Okay. Second Kings chapter. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I found it. I found it. Yeah. Here we go. Watch this. Watch this. Look at this. Look at this. Let me give you this. Let me give this to you. Watch this. Jump up to verse. Look at this. To verse 24. I'm just going to read it to you. Matter of fact, read this in your own time. I want to move along. Look at verse 27. The king of Assyria then commanded, send one of the exiled priests back to Samaria. Let him live there. Let them teach the new residents, the religious customs of the God of the land. So one of the priests who had been exiled from Samaria returned to Bethel and taught the new residents how to worship the Lord. 
Now watch this. I don't want you to look. But these various groups, look at verse 29. But these various groups of foreigners also continue to worship their own gods. In town after town where they lived, they placed their idols at the pagan shrines that the people of Samaria had built. Look at verse 30. Look at this. Uh, now I'm going to give you some new gods. Watch this. Those from Babylon worship idols of their god, Sukkoth Banoth. So there's one. Look at this. Those from Kufa worship their god, Nagal. Those from Hamath worship Ashima. The Avites worship their gods, Nibhaz and Tartak. And the people of Servaim even burn their own children as sacrifices to their gods, Adrimelech and Ahimelech. Look at verse 32. These new words, look at this. Watch this. This is going to bless you. These new residents worship the Lord, but they also appointed from among themselves all sorts of people as priests to offer sacrifices at the places of worship and they and though watch this and though they worship the lord see look at this and though they worship the lord who brought them look at this, and though they worship the lord they continue to follow their own gods according to the religious customs of the nations from which they came and this is still going on today. Wait a second. Look what it says. Look at this. And they continue to follow their former practices instead of worshiping the Lord and obeying his decree. What is this saying here? Very simple. Watch this. No one is not saying you don't love God, for those of you that are watching me. No one is not saying that you're not even born again or even in covenant with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're born again, obviously. But the Bible here also says that not only did they worship God, but they also had their heart aligned to other gods. And the Bible begin to name these particular other gods. And I am only going to give you two. And when I come back, we do another part two, and I'll go through the rest of them. But I want to talk to you quickly about one of them called Ashama. And it's in the verse. It says, and they worship those from Hamath, worship Ashama. Now watch this. This one is a big one because I taught this on my Facebook page. And this one's going to rustle some of your feathers because most evangelicals are caught up in, in Ashima. The word Ashima is a Semitic goddess of fate. F-A-T-E. In Mesopotamia, uh, those that lived in Mesopotamia, they worship the god called Ashima. Ashima is the derivative of the word fate or F-A-T-E. You and I understand it as the word purpose, the goddess of purpose. Now, if that don't already ring bells, then I don't know what is. Because if there is anything that the average evangelical is caught up in more than worshiping Jesus is finding my purpose. Let me, let, wait, 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 let me say this again. Let me, let me say this again. There is an extreme idolatrous mindset in God's people about finding my purpose. Now, I'm not saying finding your purpose is wrong, but there is an over venerated idolatry within the Christian church of, I need to find my purpose. I need to find my tribe. I need to connect with this person. Why? So I can fulfill my purpose. I to make sure that I marry the right person. Boy, so that way I can fulfill my purpose. And we find Christians indirectly worshiping Ashima more than they do Jesus. Now, no one is saying you don't worship Jesus. But watch this. Finding their purpose is holding such veneration that it is literally synonymous with being born again because if you ask the average millennial what is the gospel you know what they would say that the gospel means that there's a hole in your heart that only God can fill and that you're desperately trying to look for God and you're filling it with all this other stuff that is not the gospel the Bible says you are a sinner and that you're on your way to hell and that you are in desperate need of 
salvation, the born again message is not get saved to find your purpose, is get saved. Listen to me, it's get saved so that Jesus can wash away your sins, that he could write your name in the Lamb's book of life, and that you allow God to fulfill his assignment through you. Your assignment after you get born again is to become and be conformed to the image of Jesus, not find my purpose. Now watch this. When you are conformed to the image of Jesus, purpose will find you. Purpose will be synonymous with finding and trying to be like Christ. And this is why I uh, God began to show me that the, the preoccupation with the Christian church right now is they love me, but indirectly they have no idea that they are in league with Ashima. Now, what does Ashima mean? And the text here uses the word Ashima. Basically, it means this. The word Ashima is also a derivative. If you look the word up, it means guilt. Fate and guilt. So it means this. Let me put it in layman's term. Making people feel guilty about not fulfilling their fate. Or making people feel guilty about not fulfilling their purpose. So we find a lot of Christians, they are so preoccupied with finding their purpose that they are no longer preoccupied trying to be like Jesus. They're no longer trying to deny themselves and take up their cross and follow him. Did you catch what I just said? They no longer want to uh, surrender their heart to him and allow God and allow the Holy Spirit to work through them and to be Jesus's hands and his eyes and his ears. Why? Because they don't know any better. So I'm here to tell you that worshiping of purpose is not, nobody's worshiping their purpose, but they are venerating it. And venerating your purpose is nothing more than modern day worship of Ashima. That is, let me ask you this question. How many of you right now are feeling miserable? You want to know why you're feeling miserable? Because if I was to ask you, you will tell me this, because I'm not fulfilling my purpose. This is where the Christian church is. Why? Because they have no idea. So what is the worship of Ashima? The demon of Ashima comes down to get people's eyes away from the centrality of the cross and Christ and putting it on to their assignment, putting it on to their purpose. And that ends up becoming a doctrine of demons. Because if you ask the average pastor that's in these Chuck E. Cheese, Willy Wonka babysitting churches, if you ask them what their teaching series on, they're not telling you to be like Jesus. They're telling you how to find your purpose. Did you catch what I just said? Now, for the rest of you, I'm not saying that finding your purpose and asking God, what is your purpose is wrong? No, but a, a preoccupation and a venerating of it will end up you becoming purpose idolatry. You end up idolizing the God, the goddess of fate without even realizing it. And guess what? There was a whole city dedicated to that. Let me give you one more and I'll end it here for today. And then we'll help you get delivered. There was another demon called Nergal in the text. The word Nergal is the Hebrew word hero. The Hebrew word a hero. Now, now the derivative of that is, look at this, is someone always looking to be the first in everything and the savior of everything, which means the one that comes to fix it, the one who has the answer that their revelation is better than everyone else, that they have the new revelation that's going to bring change in the body of Christ. Let me say this here. I'm not the guy to bring change in the revelation of deliverance. I'm a forerunner to deliverance. My job is to inspire you. I'm not the guy to bring change globally. Why? No, because the only one that's the true deliverer is Christ Jesus, the Lord, and he is the deliverer. But there is, watch this. There is in the body of Christ, this hero 
worship, where people are venerating their spiritual fathers and their spiritual mothers and their bishops and their pastors and their pastors become the hero in the in their worldview as opposed to Christ. That's what Nogal means. Nogal is, is making someone, putting someone at the same place. If you was to ask someone, they'll tell you, I'm not worshiping my spiritual parent. I'm not worshiping my pastor. But some people venerate them so high that they can't go on vacation unless they get a blessing from their pastor. They can't move, make a move without getting a, 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 a permission from their pastor or whatever the case may be. No, God is a demon that causes people to want to be first. And if you're watching me and you want to be first and someone's hero in someone else's life and you're Causing people to look at you as opposed to directing them to Christ. There's a demon called Nagal that's there. And God is saying you need to be mindful of that wanting to be the hero in the situation, wanting to be the first in the situation, or wanting to be the one where everybody goes to in the situation as opposed to reflecting or deflecting away from you and pointing them unto Christ. And watch this. And you're going to get mad. And I know you're going to get mad at this one. Listen, 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 listen. You're going to get mad. You're going to get mad. And you don't have to agree. But we just saw this in 2020. We just made a hero out of someone who didn't get elected. You miss what I just said. That's where that's coming from. Yeah, see, I told you. You can hear a pin drop with that one. We made a man a hero. And God said, what? And knocked him down from that. Did you catch what I just said? Listen, and that's, watch this. You're going to get mad. And everybody was prophesying. And then everybody messed up. And then everybody got it wrong. Why? Because they genuinely thought that this person was the person. This person was the person. And then there was a strong delusion that came. And then what was a good thing, because it what well, he wasn't a bad thing. Let's just establish that he wasn't a bad thing. All right, because I was on the same train saying the same thing. All right. In case you think I'm on the other side, all right. But watch this. But what happened was a delusion came as it happens with everybody. We end up making someone a hero. Would you like me to connect the dots to drop the to drop my own mic? The Bible says the Nephilim were the heroes of old. There it is again. It says, these were men of renown, heroes of old. So watch this. How does this apply today? I'm done. Very simple. Go Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, who was alive during the time of Noah? The Nephilim were walking on the earth. The sons of God, now keep in mind, the sons of God were also walking on the earth until the flood came and God locked them in chains, uh, chains of darkness in Tartarus to be released in Revelation chapter 11 when they, the angel opens the bottomless pit and you see locusts coming out with the hair of a woman. Why does it say hair of a woman? Because these were the sons of God who fell in love with women. Catch the metaphor there. That's what the Bible says. And what you and I are seeing is the resurgence of other demons that are manifesting. Other demons that are manifesting. Can you be honest? Last year, I had never seen division. I've been saved since 1992. I have never seen the body of Christ dis fractured and divided ever in my life. You want to know why? Because a whole new demon rose up. And maybe I'll say it, but I'm not, because I think I got you mad enough with that one. And God is saying he wants to deliver you from the other demons. I'm passing it back to you, Come Isaiah. On. I'm telling you guys, some of you are like, where are you, Isaiah? Guys, I'm falling out. You tell me. Where else are you going to get this type of preaching and this type of teaching? Next level, guys. God is doing something right now. I'm literally... Now, listen. This is the first time, Alexander, this has ever happened in two years, two, whatever how many years you guys have been watching me. I'm speechless because I'm telling you, God is doing something right now. We're an hour and a half in. Alexander, thank you so much for pouring out. And listen, you guys are like, where are you? You don't interrupt somebody when they're preaching like that. I know when I get started to preach, when I'm preaching, you know, I was recently on several interviews and they just let me go for it. And I said, man, so much 
much better when someone will just let me go for it while I'm preaching. And so thank you. And we are going to do a part two. You already heard it. He's already committed to a part two. Um, I'm telling you guys, this is something you're going to have to watch over and over. I think this is the best podcast we've ever had since we started last year. God is doing something right now. God is speaking to the body of Christ. And don't all try to get all up in here and say, Where's this or that in the Bible? He gave you guys more verses than you've had in the last five years of your church. So don't get up here. Your pastor gives you two verses per Sunday. And you guys just got over like 50 verses during this. God is doing something. All of you that have stayed, I know many of you in the chat are feeling deliverance. You're feeling manifestations. You're feeling God moving in deliverance in your life. I would love just to end it. Um, Apostle Alexander Pagani, if you would just pray a prayer, mass deliverance over everybody watching. And then we'll shut it down here. We'll, We'll talk a little bit about the training that they can purchase the advanced school of deliverance because I want to make sure that we get on that that you guys get on that in the comments in the chat he pulled no punches tonight he didn't hold back tonight I want to just pray a quick prayer of mass deliverance over you guys and then we're going to get into here we'll get some some outro here share where you guys can follow him talk a little bit about the advanced school of deliverance which is in the comments in the description but let's just do this guys really quickly here we're going to pray some mass deliverance over you guys for those of you that are watching um I want you to repeat this prayer after me. I know Mm. that I gave you a lot, but this is my job. This is what apostles do. Apostles come and they challenge you and they take you to the next level. And you want to know why? Because I genuinely believe that you are ready and that you're able enough to handle it. Especially those of you that are new to the faith and you're probably saying, man, I just got here and he's laying it on me. Let me tell you something. Isaiah can testify to this. It took us years of detoxing a lot of this religiosity and this Uh, misinformation of evangelicalism. There's nothing wrong with it, but a lot of it is baby Christian stuff. You guys, if you got saved with this with this ministry, you guys are in a good place because you got what took me 20 years to get. You're getting it early in Christianity. So this means 20 years from now, you're going to be a powerhouse for God. You're going to be bigger and better than the way we are now. You look up to us, but in 20 years from now, we're going to be elders looking up to you because you're going to be so on fire and so revelatory. And this is why I'm here, but it requires you to pray this prayer. You need to ask God to begin to show you the other demons that you are unaware of that are there. So that way he could expand your thinking. Repeat this prayer after me and say, Heavenly Father, I realize that I am in need of the Holy Spirit showing me these other demons that I'm unaware of. Holy Spirit, I ask you, inspire me, illuminate me, show me, reveal to me these other demons that the enemy uses against the church. Expand my thinking. Lord, expand my worldview. Holy Spirit, go into every room inside of me that is limited and bound by tradition, by religiosity, by legalism, and set me free. Satan, I command every hidden demon and every other demon that is lurking in the shadows of my mind, of my soul, in my body, in my emotions, in my subconscious. I order you, manifest and reveal yourself and come out of me now. Out, go. I order you in Jesus' name to expose and reveal yourself and come out of me. Go. In Jesus' name, I order you by the authority of Jesus' name that you come out, you leave. I don't care how long you've been inside me. I don't care if you're coming down through a generational curse. I sever every generational curse that is lurking hidden deep within my bloodline. I break it and I sever it now in the name of Jesus. Go in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, remove every demon now in the name of Jesus. Now I want you to pray and I want you to lift your hands and I want you to go there for the next few more moments. Rokon
Rekanya ma. And I'm praying this specifically for somebody who just recently converted and you are filled and this is all new to you. I pray that the Holy Spirit would grip you and set you free and we begin to reveal to your mind those demons that have been lurking in your bloodline and in your mind and in your soul and in your body for years that they would leave now. I order you now in the name of Jesus. You come out of them. You come out of my sister. You come out of my brother now in the name of Jesus and by the authority of the courtroom of heaven and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I order you to go. Come out of my sister and brother now in the name of Jesus. Every demon, every demon that they venerate through ignorance, every demon through ignorance that they worship and they don't know that they causes divided loyalty to God. Double-mindedness out now in Jesus' name. Out, go. Every demon of Nagal, demon of Nagal, now, out, now, in Jesus' name. Demon of Ashima, causing them to worship their purpose and to venerate their purpose more than worshiping Jesus. Come out of them now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out of their worldview now in Jesus' mighty name. Leave. Go. Go. Go and never come back. Never come back in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Holy Spirit, I speak that you would fill and saturate every person that's watching me now and where the demon was removed holy spirit i'm asking that you would refill and reoccupy and show them where they messed up and where they opened the door i'm hearing the holy spirit saying to confront the doc demon of doctrine of demon i come against the demon called doctrine of demon doctrine of demons come out of them now in the name of jesus come out of them in jesus name seducing spirit come out in Jesus' mighty name, leave my brother and sister now. In the name of Jesus. Demons that came in through false teaching and wrong theology and wrong philosophy. Out now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy Spirit of truth, I'm asking you to invade those areas. And let you reoccupy where those demons were removed now, Father. And Father, we are praying that you would begin to reveal to them. Expand their thinking so they won't just be looking for the more popularized demons, Lord, but that they would be mindful of the other areas where the demons can sl slip in, Lord, and that they would be mindful of those areas and you would show them how to get delivered and set free. Father, we are praying and I'm asking you all of this in Jesus, in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. amen and amen. So amen. good. I know, I know I'm know. i reading the chat. So many people getting deliverance. So many people getting breakthrough. People saying they're throwing up. People saying they're crying. People are yawning. They're burping. Wow. So I'm telling you guys, wow. God is releasing mass deliverance. There's 3,500 of you right now. God is releasing the power of mass deliverance. This is just the beginning. This year, we're going to keep going after it in Jesus' name. As he said, we're going to be having a part two here, guys. Everyone's asking, when are you guys doing part two? It's going to be soon, guys. Don't worry. God is doing something. I want to make sure that you guys so you guys give i'm going to be sending alexander something significant tonight he's poured out into us for almost two hours and so we're definitely going to bless him for all of you that are sewing i'm going to be giving a portion of that to him but also if you want to just spend a minute talking about there's a link in the comments and also a link in the description for the advanced school of deliverance if you want to touch on that alexander i do want to make sure many of you sign up for that tonight because that's something powerful that you can be used to be trained in spiritual warfare Okay, this uh, advanced school of deliverance, we just had it this last December 28th. It's three hours uh, with three sessions in between uh, where we are taking you uh, um, in a crash course of advanced spiritual warfare, which means it, within the second hour, I actually get into Ashima more in detail and some of the other demons. We get into Lilith and a couple of other ones. We kind of go into it in detail and then mass deliverance breaks out. Uh, it was conducted live, but it is now available for purchase. So if you want three hours, and here's the thing, you could purchase it. Once you purchase it, it's yours to keep. You could watch it as many times as you want, and you can also download it and watch it at your own pace. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to go to the link. That's the third link in the comp, pinned in the comment. You're going to go to the website. You're going to purchase it. My website, we will send you a password to your email. So make sure that you check your spam folder because sometimes it goes to the spam folder. Uh, it, there will be a password for you to go 
where you can watch it. And then once you go to the website where you can watch it, there'll be an option there that you can download it and it will be yours. It will be yours to keep three hours of nonstop advanced spiritual warfare teaching done live. So we kind of get it in and then we go into a whole list of pantheon of different types of gods that we get into. And then I also teach you how to develop your own weapon during deliverance, meaning mm. that a cup of a bottle of water can actually even be used to as a weapon. Remember, this is this can also be used as a brazen serpent to be able to get people healed. And God wants to teach you how to never get stuck. So if you're a deliverance minister and you never want to get stuck during deliverance, I need you to go get this advanced uh, school of deliverance. It'll be yours to keep. And I'll teach you biblically on how you can create a weapon when God helps you, when you are dealing with a tough demon and you'll never be stuck. You'll never so be stuck. So good. Now everyone's asking the chat. I've, I've, I think I've read over a thousand comments, which we've already had probably close to 30,000 comments come through tonight, but I've been reading over and over. Where did you get your shirt is the question of the hour. <laughs> My good friend, he's actually in the chat room. Um, he, uh, Apostle uh, Jamie Canales, he just also got elected to a Senate seat in his city in upstate New York. He loves our ministry and he's been in the chat room on Facebook. He sent me this shirt and I told him, I said, I'm going to wear this shirt the next time I get on. Um, so if you want to be able to get this shirt, Jamie, if you, Apostle Jamie, if Is you are in the chat people room, can just, get it at? Um, actually, I believe I'll send it to you. I'll get the information and okay. I'll give it to you. And then you could give it to your followers. Okay. In the next so broadcast. guys, here's what we'll do. We'll put the link late. Whenever I get the link. So you're gonna have to check back in the next day or two. He's I'll in put the chat room. The, He's in the chat room. Okay. I, I'm not gonna be able to see it though. Cause the comment, the comments are too crazy here. And a lot of the people on Facebook won't be able to see the same ones, but I'm going to make sure I right. get the link to get it in the description of the YouTube video. So I have a long description I could add it to. Right. So I'll make sure I put the link. If we can get this online, we'll go ahead and put the link. I need to get me a shirt like that because I love that defund the demonic. So once he gets us the link, <laughs> I'll go ahead as soon as I get it, I'll put it in the description on YouTube. Again, Alexander Pagani, thank you for pouring into us for almost two hours now. I appreciate you. I can't wait to have you back. And listen, you still, as I said, have permission anytime you want to jump on. You just let me know and we'll, we'll just, we'll nail it again. It was so awesome. So amazing to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me on. Um, as usual, I, I, I'm, let me say this. I'm cheap. Number one is this. What I love about you and I's relationship is, one, it's authentic. Two, uh, there's no competition between us. Come on. You know what I'm saying? We, it's, it's, it, listen. We all we're both working for the master, and I'll say this publicly. You know, I'm a forerunner to deliverance. You know, I paved the way. I took all the bumps and bruises so that the next generation can do uh, what you guys have done. And to see your ministry take off, you know, that you're averaging two to three, four thousand at one broadcast. Um, that is brings my heart joy. That is way more than I would have ever expected, even on my broadcast. To see it happening so rapidly and so quickly is a testament uh, that this revelation of deliverance is going from glory to glory to glory to glory. So you have my absolute blessing and I'm cheering for you. And the reason why I don't log in to your broadcast is not because I don't want to. Because the truth of the matter is, is I want to let you shine, man. I love to let you shine. Mm. I don't like to hog, come in and hog up uh, any of it. Listen, this is God. You're the man for the hour. God is using you to do with deliverance more than what I've ever could have done. I'll deal with topics like this, but you are, listen, you literally are that guy that God is using nationally uh, to take this revelation of the list. And I was praying for this. I've been praying for this because I, I was beginning to say, Lord, will you raise up somebody to go further than what I go, where I go? Because Lord, the, the top, if you, whenever you call me home and it's going to be a long time for many years from now, but I would say, Lord, I would hope that a generation had been inspired uh, to keep this going. And what I am seeing with what's happening with your ministry, Isaiah, you know, is, I watched the broadcast. Listen, you have an immense amount of favor. God has given you access. Uh, people are getting delivered. The deliverance map is being a blessing. Let me say this publicly. Uh, about 10% of our church membership has grown because of the deliverance map. 
Come on. on your website. They're coming to our church. People have joined my church because of the deliverance map, because they say Pagani does deliverance. We're going over there. It is working. It is working. So listen, I decree favor over your life, man of God. I decree access. I decree that the revelation and the mantle of the spirit of wisdom and insight that rests upon my life would be granted unto you. May a portion of the rare oil that is given unto me be added to your white, to added to your flasks filled with oil. May God use the rare spices and the rare aromas that carry in our ministry. May it be transferred unto you as well. May your revelation increase. May God open the scriptures unto you. Maybe you be able to see the secrets and the codes and the mysteries of the kingdom in the realm of the demonic. May God be make you a sharpshooter in deliverance, not only to cast them out, but to have eagle eye. May you be, maybe you be able to have foresight and may you be, be able to see deep within the recesses of the word and to the deep recesses of people's soul to be able to discern. May the highest level of the gift of discernment of spirits be granted unto you as you remain humble. And may God use you to set not only uh, the church free, but set the marketplace free. May God grant you open a road for you in the marketplace and may every mountain be made flat and may the mountain of the secular world be made flat unto you and may you be granted access and may you run through a troop and leap over every secular wall and get into the homes and into the marts of those that God has raised up in the secular marketplace to touch this world with witty inventions and, 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 and powerful things that God has given them and access and influence may you be able to reach people of influence and may god use you to save a generation in jesus mighty name amen amen, amen. amen. thank amen. you so much thank you so much i can't wait to do it again we'll talk soon i'm gonna text you right after the Bye. broadcast love you man thank you so much for everything god bless, god bless. Take care. thank you guys <laughs> i'm telling you guys what a powerful time we had i don't even know what to say that was just straight holy ghost fire just hitting us with scripture with the word and that was that was crazy i'm literally speechless of what god is doing please guys pray about sowing into this ministry so that we can bless people like alexander pagani and continue to do what we're doing and i'm gonna say guys when i bring on guests i tell all my guests go as long as you want go for it don't stop don't pause and so when i have guests on and they only go for like five minutes and they stop and then i talk and they talk i know sometimes i bring on guests and you're like you talk more than you you let your guests talk but just know that when i'm bringing on my guests i'm telling them just to go forward and say everything god's called them to say and do everything god's called them to do and so i'm so excited tonight alexander pagani just went for it just incredible yes my mom said words cannot convey absolutely i agree words cannot describe or convey what god did tonight powerful 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 alexander pagani is no joke this is why i told you guys i love his stuff i love his content he's a brother of mine we're talking about this year doing some in-person stuff together and so i'm excited for what god is doing and what god is going to continue to do and we do got a lot of donations coming in through right now tonight so we're going to start reading those and we'll read those donations we'll read the chat welcome to everyone that's new i know we had a massive influx of new people on facebook and youtube tonight we peaked out at a little bit over i believe 3500 viewers so praise the lord god is doing something even with the algorithms as i told you guys you got to get on every night at six o'clock like comment and share the videos because the algorithms are changing i've talked to three or four friends and they all said the same thing has happened with their youtube channels with their facebook they're just having a harder time reaching people getting their content on people's page you know the problem is not getting people to listen it's getting our content in front of people so we do need your guys's help with that we're uploading every single day we're still testing out upload times and what we, how to optimize and doing our best to reach new people and get our content in front of you guys and so and the reason why i don't have super chat is because they keep 30 percent. so for those of you wondering why don't i have stars on facebook or super chat on youtube because stars and, and super chat they keep minimum 30 percent of everything that comes in so if you want to give you can give in the description in the comments there's also links there you can give through the website isaiasaldivar.com partner pray about becoming a monthly partner we do have a monthly partners call on thursday night for all of our monthly partners and you're going to get a link tomorrow if you don't get the link by noon make sure that you get on here and you comment on facebook and you comment on instagram so i could send you the link manually because a lot of people their internet providers block our link block our mass emails so make sure that you do that um, so that you can make sure that you get in the partner's call and you get the link. You don't want to miss that. It's going to be powerful. Somebody's coming into my room right now. Who is this? Are you coming in here? 
Okay, Alyssa's joining us tonight. Okay, don't make me start laughing, guys. Already, here we go. Um, we're gonna start reading the donations here. We have been live for over two hours, so we're going to read the donations. Alyssa and Nova are coming in here. Uh, that's you have to use Justice's chair, I think. I think that was gonna be too high. Careful for the switches. Okay, Alyssa's coming in here. She's grabbing her chair. And then I'm gonna help her grab this for a second. Yeah, everyone's saying yay. I know you guys keep asking Alyssa to be on here and the baby to be on here. So they're gonna be in here. I'll switch the cameras once they come in here. And then we'll start reading donations. Again, thank you to everyone that's sewing, that's giving, that's signing up for his um, e-course. And then everyone that's donating tonight. I'm gonna be sewing into him right when we're off of here. Everyone's, yeah, everyone's doing a backflip. Everyone's excited. I know you guys have been asking for her to come in here. Let me help her really quick, guys. Bear with us here. I'm gonna switch camera angles. I should have had this ready. Give me one second. We'll be right back. All right, guys, hold on. We're getting the chair. Bear with us here. You're going to have to lower this once you sit. Bringing in the baby. Nova's going to be with us reading the donations tonight as well. Give me one second here. Let me turn this up. Thank you to everyone that's continuing to sew. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I should have changed my thing. It's going to... Yeah, we're going to put this in and out of focus. There's baby Nova. Let me try. I know it's going to put one of us out of focus, but we're going to try to... This should be fun. Don't give me. It's a lot of you for sure. It's going to put one of us in or out of focus. Let me see if I can fix this. Hold on. So I'm gonna put this on. Is that too dark now? All right, we're trying, guys, to fix it here, but one of us, you have to sit forward a little bit if you can lean your chair forward. You can see both of me? Okay, that's all right. One of us is gonna go in and out. It's okay, we'll make it work. There's baby Nova. She is so cute. Look at her triple, double, quadruple chin, her double cheeks. She is so precious. Okay, Alyssa's gonna be reading the chat. I'll read the donations. Don't start laughing. Listen, don't start. If you guys start laughing, you guys are going to make me break out in laughter. We're not doing that again, guys. So everyone just relax here. Okay. All right. I just changed it. So you guys should be able to see us good. All right. You can read the comments here and I'm going to start reading the donations. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Wow, there's a lot that have come through tonight. I'll read the Venmo after I read the PayPal. Again, if you want to give, you can give. It's on screen. There's Zelle, there's Venmo, and there's PayPal. All the links are there. If the links don't work, you can go to them manually. Um, someone in the comments it, pretending to be you. Who, 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 who? Who's pretending to be me? Are they on Facebook or are they on YouTube? Someone said there's someone in the comments pretending to be me. You guys are commenting so fast, I'm just losing, losing the comments. But if there is someone pretending to be me, go ahead and just ban them. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and my moderators will ban them. I don't know who they are, but if they're on YouTube, go ahead and type their comments so we can ban them. All right, here we go. She's reading the comments here. So whatever you guys want to say to her, feel free. I'm going to move this over so she can read the comments. All right. I know. See, I'm telling you guys, it's hard. It's hard. You see one and then it's gone. I can't get it. PayPal link. All right, let me give you the paypal.me link. Um, paypal.me slash... There's the paypal.me if you want to use the paypal.me, but you can also just give in the description or the comments, hit that, hit that first link and it'll give through PayPal. You should start a vlogging channel with your family. That'd be cool. That'd be crazy. All right, here we go. She's going to read those and I'm going to start reading the, let me see if I can sit back so you're in focus. Okay. Or you're going to have to sit. Let me sit. Let me sit back here. There we go. All right. As long as we just stay at the same level. Okay. We're good. All right, Emmanuel Ruiz, always the first one to give. Thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate you, and I got your prayer request. Thank you so much, Emmanuel Ruiz. Priscilla Delgado, I said, love your teachings. I've learned so much. Thank you. Pablo Felix, thank you so much. I said, don't dine and dash people. God bless. Thank you, Pablo Felix. You know what? Maybe let me put these over here so that it looks like I'm actually looking at... Oh, no, what happened here? So it looks like I'm looking at the uh, screen. Hold on, guys. I'm moving around the screen here. I'm, we're just trying to get adjusted. There we go. Now it's going to actually look like hopefully I'm looking at the screen. Okay. Pablo Felix said, don't dine and dash. Thank you, Pablo. Anonymous said, Pastor, your fire is contagious. We've been suiting up and pressing in to become spiritual snipers. After my de partial deliverance, my life has changed. Your videos have helped me deliver myself more and more. I pour God's love on everyone I see. Thank you. Anonymous, thank you so much. Leon Riley, thank you so much. The tithes and offerings, the Lord is giving me, my, the Lord has me giving to you. Isaiah, can you pray? And I got your prayer request. And I won't read prayer requests out loud because some of them are sensitive. So thank you to everybody. 
That's sending those in. I'll make sure that I get to those. All right. She's so cute. Jesus Melendres, thank you so much. Alyssa, read the, if you if they're asking you to read the co read the donations, don't ignore those comments. No, I don't see any. Michelle Chase just saying no one's said there. forgot to put my name on the first one and I got your prayer request. Thank you, Michelle. Ashley uh, Liriano said thank you the works you're doing for the kingdom. Glory to God, he's working through you tremendously. God bless you and your family. Thank you, Ashley. Elizabeth DJB, thank you so much. Benjamin King said I found a lot of clarity in your teachings. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Benjamin King. Anonymous, thank you. Angela Silva, thank you so much. Elodie said, thank you for that blessing. Thank you, Elodie. Wilby said, powerful, thank you. Jeff Rodriguez said, glory to God, thank you, Jeff. Lulu Sanchez, thank you. Jim, thank you, bro, you are a legend. I appreciate you. And by the way, I did see you, Yvonne Tunnyhill. You said you were at church, but you checked in. Thanks for checking in, I appreciate that. Everyone's asking you. See, you're not reading I'm this. Not reading it. She's not reading your guys' comments because she knows you guys are asking her to read the donations. Everyone wants you to read them. All right, let's just let her. She's ready. Oh, She's prepared. We practice this. <laughs> just start right here, okay? Just go up. Look, all these are easy. You just can literally just say thank you, and I'll scroll up as you go. Okay, hold on. Alyssa's going to read a couple here. Oh, my gosh. You already Did you do Jemai? Yeah. Okay. Um, thank Don't. you. <laughs> Don't. No, we're not doing this again. You already. Okay. I'm, not, I'm only. Why Listen, you, I'm, o me, I'm only la I'm only laughing because of last time's video. All right, I'm not going to laugh. I'm going to sit back and just, she's going to go ahead and do it. Go ahead. Thank you, Juanita Sorrell. Is that good? Okay. Uh, thank you, Cece. Thank you, Anthony Weber. Um, thank you, Anonymous. Uh, thank you, Andrea. It says, thank you. I didn't think I was going to understand where is was, was going, good. where this was going, but glory. <laughs> Go. <laughs> this is You're doing good. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Oh, oh that didn't okay. sound good. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, Jeremy Barmore. Thank you, Anonymous. Thank you, Jennifer Gonzalez. Thank you, Anonymous. Thank you, Tijala Miller. <laughs> thank you, Anonymous. Thank you, Louise Delia. I can't read the last of it. Um, Laura Atlook, it says, just found you from Jenny Weaver, and you're all I've been watching, Street Fire. Pray for our little church in Alberta. We need to move. Are you talking, bro? Say hi, like no nose. Are you talking? Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, thank you, um, Alex Mendez. Everyone's saying, good job. Oh. I like how you guys are saying it like she's like in third grade. You're like, good job, Reedy. <laughs> I actually just did just his homework on Reed. Um, thank you, Janice M. It says, God told me while watching your teachings in Leviathan that he is exposing in this hour. And I am thankful for tonight's teaching from Pastor Alex. God is doing a mighty thing in this hour and equipping us for the war. Praise God. Thank you, George Franco. How can you tell? Oh, that's a question for you. Okay. No? No. Okay. Uh, Rebecca, it says, a very much needed session thank you thank you thank you and then shannon says thank you for tonight i appreciate all you all you're doing so much <laughs> okay i'm done <laughs> she literally you you made it all the way to one left see guys i told you guys she can read i didn't laugh she didn't laugh i told you guys thank you lorraine mahet said may god bless your ministry amen ash said you guys were on fire tonight thank you and then Anonymous said, I didn't write my name because it's too hard. God bless you and your family. God created an amazing vessel. Thank you so much, Anonymous. And then someone said, how do you know if God's leading you to a specific ministry? I would just try to find a ministry that preaches the full gospel. I know it's not easy to do. Signs, wonders, miracles, holiness, revival, deliverance. You know, just try to find a ministry that's full. But I don't think God necessarily will like lead you to ministries. I think you just need to find a ministry or ask God to um, reveal to you a ministry that's in your area. But I don't think, I don't think you need to like, yeah, anyways. Um, okay, we're going to do our Venmo. Thank you to everyone that's giving. Give me one second here. I wasn't laughing. Everyone's like, don't laugh, Isaiah. I wasn't laughing. The only, the only reason why I was laughing last time is because you guys were making me laugh. Great job. We love you. Bless your family. You guys should do a biblical and spiritual parenting guide for raising children. So mad. Okay, let me read the Venmo as the baby is yawning here. She's actually starting to talk now. 
She's been saying daddy a lot. No. No. <laughs> All right, let's read the Venmo. Um, you talking? All right, let's see if she'll talk here. Talk? Nope, she's camera shy. She's gonna drool on the mic. Okay. All right, I'll read the Venmo here. We got a lot here on the Venmo. Let me read these. Let's see, where are we at here? You can read the comments while I read the Venmo. Of course she stills the show. She's four months. All right, Amanda Naves says, thank you, powerful man of God. Thank you so much, Amanda. Tammy White said, blessings. Thank you, Tammy. Ashley Scherter said, thank you both. Amazing truth. Keep it 100. Thank you so much, Ryan Darty said, the hardest worker I've ever met. Breakthrough faith, bro. Thank you, Ryan. Alicia Lyle said, God bless and tell your wife her new hair looks amazing. Look at that. And that was from an hour ago. Thank you so much. It's a long process. <laughs> she said it was a long process to do her hair. Robert, thank you so much at recruiting the harvesters. Lindsay Christofferson said God's word. Carmen C said continue to do his work. Thank you, Carmen C. Christina Corona, thank you so much. Keith Geister said praise be to Jesus. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Josh Frakes. He said thank you, Pastor. We love you, bro. Love you, Josh Frakes. Thanks you. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Larissa Tutok said you and Alexander have given phenomenal wisdom tonight. Wow. Thank you. God bless you guys. Thank you. Rabina Cody said amazing podcast. God bless Alexander and Isaiah. Karis Ibarra said mind blown fire emoji. Christopher Morgan, thank you so much. Mary Saul Aviles, thank you. Said thank you so much for tonight. I always learn so much. God bless. Janice Aylman said that was a great word. Thank you so much. God bless you and your family and your ministry. Carla said thank you. Blessing to the body of Christ. Praying for you and your family. Precious babies of yours. Much blessings. Thank you. Vashon Dalbridge said wow, what a blessing tonight. Definitely switches the attention book that the Bible is truly spiritual. Great lesson. Thank you, Vashon. Awesome. Everyone's saying your hair looks beautiful in the chat. Let me lean back so you can be in. All right. Geneva Wick, thank you so much. Ke uh, Kieran Perry said a gift for, gift for the ministry. Thank you so much. Mercedes Campos, thank you. Zanani Hernandez said for the ministry. Jay Rocks says is eating at places with idols and open door. I don't think so, Jay. Alexandria Rojas said sewing tonight was fire. Love you and the fam. Thank you, Al Alexandria. Johnny Torres said, God bless you and your family. I pray that the seed that I'm sowing in your ministry reaps harvest in Jesus' name. Thank you, Johnny. And then lastly on Venmo, Vince DeRocco said, pra praise report from a call-in a few weeks ago. You mentioned someone who's going to come and water what had been planted next day out of the blue. My brother, who was a missionary with a busy schedule, called and asked for my friend's phone number to connect and pray with him. Awesome, Vince. Thank you so much for the testimony. Anonymous, thank you. Denise Flores said, thank you for all you do. Keep on keeping on. K Kajal said donations. Thank you, Kajal. Thank you to everyone giving on the website. If you guys became a monthly partner tonight, you will get that link tomorrow for Thursday. And then also you're going to get the 70 messages, the 25% of the merch store, all the past calls and all the future calls. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone that's sewing, that's being a part of it. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. We're in two hours and 15 minutes in. Our kids do got to go to bed in 15 minutes. What? All the kids want. Yeah. You want to bring them all in? They wanted. If you want <laughs> to try to bring them all in. All right. All right, guys. This is gonna be. This is gonna be real life. Here's the thing, guys. <laughs> We're gonna bring all the kids in. All right. There's cords everywhere. There's lights everywhere. My office has a million things everywhere. So one button or one cable pulled will turn the live stream off. So if they all come in here and the live stream goes off, we love you guys. Just know that they hit a switch or pull the cord or something so this will probably last like five minutes getting all the kids in here so give us a second guys for all of you that stayed around you see all the kids again if our live stream goes out or the camera falls we're just gonna end it so oh the babies the baby's trying to smack the mic here i get hear Alyssa saying do not touch anything okay justice be careful girls hi baby okay come in here Show them. Justice lost both of her teeth, guys. It's not going to be in focus, baby, because the camera lens. Okay, sit back. Sit back. All right, we're going to try to get them all in here. We don't have that wide of an angle, but we'll see what we can do here. All right, everybody get in. Scoot over here. Sit right here, Jojo. Sit on my lap. 
So we have Justice in the back, which is gonna, it's gonna keep pulling all of us in focus and out of focus, it's okay. Justice in the back, Journey. So Justice is six, Journey is four, wave. Nova, how old are you, Nova? I'm sorry, how old are you, Harvey? I have too many, I don't even know, I don't even know which one's which. How old, how old are you, Harvey? How old are you, baby? Harvey's two, and then Nova's new. So six, four, two, and new. Someone can sit here. Jojo, sit right here. Sit right there. So I can sit right here. Don't touch any buttons. Ugh. All right, we're trying to fit them all in one frame here. And it's going to keep pulling all of us in and out of focus. It's okay. Who picked their names? Uh, Who named who? I named Justice. Jo Alyssa, I think, named Journey. I named Harvest, and I named Nova. So I named three, and she named one. But she liked them all, and she agreed on them. So we both named them. Oh, you named Harvey? Oh, apparently no, Justice named Harvey. Harvey. Alright, let me turn the music off because I know it's loud. Here. They said you that's wanna say not something? Harvey, that's Peppa Pig. <gasps> Are you Harvey or Peppa Pig? Yeah, Mommy Harvey. said you're you wanna daddy say something? Pig, that's it. <sighs> Alright. You. you wanna say something? Say something, Justice. Yeah. Hi! Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Can I press this? Okay, don't press, don't press, don't press, don't press that. Don't press that. <laughs> say something. Yeah, I open that. No, don't press anything. Yeah. Harvey, have Harvey say something. Harvey, say something. Say hi. Hello, Papa P. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Say, I'm Harvey. I have it. I love you. Have a good night. Have a good night. night. Somebody, want, they want to hear a song. Me, me. All right, go ahead. Oh, no. Who wants to sing? You want to sing? Wants to sing. Go ahead. Nanny. Okay. Oh, nobody. nobody wants to sing. Oh. My arm's messed up here. Oh, Alright, guys. You're singing. Okay. okay. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. We're going to get off here. We got a bunch of other stuff we got to get done, and the kids got to go to bed. Let me read these couple <laughs> of donations real quick. Aniva. Thank you so much, Aniva White said, God bless you, Isaiah and the family. Cameron Hickman said, God bless you and Excel uh, Alex. May he continue to cause increase that your blessings will take over and the blood of Jesus and Messiah covers you and your families. Keep allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to use you both. Thank you, Cameron. Candy Vallejo said, such revelation I received. Thank you so much, Candy. I appreciate that. Ryan Downs said, God bless you, Isaiah. And then I got your prayer request. Absolutely. Thank you guys for sowing, for giving, for partnering. I'm going to be sending Alexander a... Love offering tonight. Okay. All right. We love you guys. We appreciate bye. you guys. Bye. Thanks for being here. Say bye, everybody. Bye. bye. Love you guys. Bye, bye. All right, guys. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Shout out to every one of you. Tonight was amazing. We'll be live again Friday night at 6 o'clock. Partners call Thursday night at 6 o'clock. And we'll send out the invites tomorrow. We upload every single day at 6 o'clock. So we'll see you guys there. Love you guys. Bye. Good night. Say bye. Shout out to Reverend Ambrosia Wilson. She said, I get missed every time. Not sure what you mean, but God bless you. Love you and appreciate you. God bless.